just. I'm thinking. I'm thinking here. There's a thought process. All right, I go in. Let me get that. You know what? Let me go here. Ha! Oh. Hold it. No twitching. All right, now I go. You know what? Let me go here. Hold it. Okay, okay. All right, let me go in. Oh, no. Oh, no, what? Okay, this has got to stop. <laughs> this is wrong. Okay, he saw it. All right, I'll go in for the queen. Right. This is the pawn I want. Well, he's not even going to let me have the pawn. Come on. All right, if you're not going to let me have the pawn, i got to go. All right. Good day, good day. Wow. <laughs> One more. I want one more. I, I, yeah, I had black. What, uh... Hey guys, Brian here, and let's go over this game to see what we can learn from it. A lot of cool stuff. Um, it's great to see an international master play. I think that's the highest um, title, um, title that we've had on this channel, so pretty cool to see that happen. Um, so white played the Rui Lopez, and black played the Steinus defense. And if you were to summarize the theme of this game, it would probably be create weaknesses in your opponent and relentlessly attack them so that's kind of what happened in this game um, we see the first weakness being created here with the double pawns and in this position black play knight f6 but if you want to go and move back and pause the video and find the best move for white i mean for black i'm sorry for black in this position again black played knight f6 in the game but let's go move back and try to find a better move for black All right, the better move would just be kick the knight, right? Kick the knight and get it out of the way. And what it also does is it kind of, um, if this pawn stayed here, it would have been a target, which it was in the game. But when you move this pawn up, um, it kicks the knight away, but also it becomes kind of defended here. And it's just um, harder to attack than if it was just left here. So that's kind of one thing to learn in this game. So, but let's go back in the game, Knight of 6 was played, and then we got e5, and believe it or not, this was the only time black had a chance to have an advantage uh, for the rest of the game. This was it. After this, um, it was all white. So, in the game, black played d takes e5, but if you want to pause the video and find a better move for black in this position, you can do so now. Alright, so white is targeting... Um, kind of this weakness here so simply block it right block it and if um, white tries to kick the knight then simply now you take d takes e5 and now um, you can have the exchange here and black is all right in this position um, a lot better than before but uh, 
let's kind of continue to go on and what you'll see is that in this position um, white has two healthy pawn islands here and black has one and then two isolated pawns and now this pawn becomes a target for white and um, let's kind of go through the moves and you'll see white kind of maneuvering and following through on his plan and um, here white is rook is very powerful on the seventh is cutting off the king and controlling this uh, this row here and black is going to have a hard time activating his uh, rooks and yeah it's going to be really tough for him but uh, I want to get I want to show you guys a cool tactic that the international master actually missed here and can't really blame him because he only had one minute in the game so he's very low on time but it's a cool end game pattern to remember and uh, let me just set it up for you guys okay it's right here so black moves uh, rook e5 and he's obviously targeting white's past pawn and in the game the uh, international master or Levon played rook c7 obviously to defend the past pawn generally you want your rooks behind past pawns not in front of past pawns because it kind of takes more time for the pawn to queen so if you want to go move back and find a better move for white in this position you can do so now alright so try to keep this position in mind in your end games because right here white actually has three free tempos to queen so um, first move is and I think Nimzovic said it right I'm, I'm not sure who said it but he said that somebody said that pass pawns must be pushed so first move is c6 and now black will try to get behind it but white has another free tempo c7 because now the rook is defending now what how's white gonna get the last tempo if you want to pause the video and find it's black to move here but let's say it was white to move what is white's next move going to be it's going to be rook check right and now king moves and now the white uh, pass pawn king queen and the rook is defending the queen so there there are your three free tempos right there so what can black do well, black can't really do anything to stop this check right so just g5 and now you have the check queen rook takes rook takes and pretty easy cleanup job for white in this position so kind of a cool end game um, kind of technique to remember in your in your games right I mean your in the instinct is to kind of defend defend your rook right but kind of pause and kind of see that you'll have three free tempos to queen this pawn in this position so what can we learn from this game here um, the theme of this game like I said in the beginning was to create weaknesses in your opponents kind of position and then pile up on them and kind of if, if you're, you're the one that has the weakness kind of to just be cognizant of try to how to best kind of uh, alleviate those weaknesses or kind of in this position kind of defend against those against the attacks on those weaknesses right and um, that's kind of the key to keep in mind and here um, pass pawns must be pushed right they must be pushed and look for th look, look for your free tempos and don't forget the checks that will earn you another free tempo to, uh, to queen your pass pawn and um, yeah those are the lessons to learn from this game and um, it's kind of really it's interesting to see because um, Carlini this is the style that Carlini usually plays like he kind of probes and creates a weakness in your position that just piles up on it so it was kind of interesting to see somebody do that to him for a change right and uh, I guess that's 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 the cool thing about chess it's like no matter how good you are there's always going to be somebody better right and um, I mean even Magnus Carlsen right the the uh, computer engines will crush him so it's just it's it's really cool to see kind of um you know higher rated players playing even higher rated players and kind of seeing how they um what their strategies are to uh to win and a very kind of um i don't know how i would describe what would be the best way to describe what white did it's kind of like um 
kind of like an anaconda squeeze, I guess, and create the weakness and just squeeze and exploit and attack. So hope you guys enjoyed the game. Hope you guys enjoyed the analysis. And um, yeah, don't forget to please like, share, subscribe, and comment. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Thanks again. All right.